So the graduates' roles include delivering on a viable project. So once they come in, they're given one project when they're joining because we do prepare their learning materials. And it's a project that we are looking at the viability of investing in, but we don't have someone who can be able to do all the work that comes with it. So the graduate is given that on a project. They're supposed to quantify, tell us if it's worth the while, give us the costing, give us everything that comes with it, just to the background and tell us if we want to invest, this would be the best option, this would be the worst option, this would be an option I wouldn't even think about. So it's very interesting and they do that presentation quarterly. Then they participate in complex jobs. They are also tasked with identifying process improvement areas of the organization. They are a fresh set of eyes. So once they're out there, they're able to see and give us ideas on what you can change. Then they do the quarterly presentations to the managers and employees and we prompt them with questions. We want to understand why did you do this? Why can't you do this? And we're making them think ahead. And the beauty of all this program is, and it's what I keep telling the graduates, is uh, when, again, it's a program that you don't guarantee jobs, when they go out looking for jobs, their projects are a key achievable. If anybody would ever find their hands on that, the projects they have, you will be blown on what they have done. They do a very wonderful job on the projects. It's something that can sell them instantly. And those who don't get absorbed in this have all landed supervisory positions in different organizations. So that tells you this is a fresh university student who completed last year and had a second alpha. And in 18 months, after undergoing a program, successfully becomes a supervisor, either if they are absorbed by based on another organization. So what I'm trying to say is training is very important. It's very important at all levels. We are the people who are going to dictate if we still want to have the half-baked people or we want to do something about it. Then we receive applications. We do the long distance. They come in for competency-based assessments. Uh, we do the shortlisting. They do the oral interviews. We start the program. We do inductions. They report to their sections hands-on training, completion, evaluation. One of the things I want to mention with this is uh, employers do tend to want to give them offers. They have come in to learn. As an employer, you want to give them a job. You give them a job and three months you realize the only thing they have is a degree and you send them out. So I would ask HR, when you're hiring, and one of the students is good enough, or the employee is good enough to be taken in a graduate program, please move on to the next candidate. Let them learn. Allow them to learn. It's just 18 months. I'm sure they'll get something good out of it. If there's any professor here, I'm also speaking to you. Please don't call them for scholarships for masters. Let them have 18 months of hands-on training. Too much learning with no training does not help them. Please allow them to have the hands-on training. It's very important. Do not pump them with so much theory training. Let them break. Give them the offer. Allow them to come for the offer at another point in life. So we have the community training program. It's more or less three months like uh, what we do with the attachment program. Only that we run this when the apprentices are in school. So we do it in the month of January to April. And uh, it's purely community based. We look for now the people who don't have skill, those people who have skill gaps and have not been employed. And again, these needs that have been identified by the organization, they come in, we train them with our trade trainers uh, in electrical, mechanical. Peters, boiler makers, uh, motor vehicles, and anything to do with technical side, and collaborate with the National Industrial Training Authority, and we take them for certification for grade three for a craft certificate in their area of specialization. What we are doing is we are spreading the risk out. 
can they be able to stand on their own? We don't want them staying home. We don't want them doing drugs. We don't want them feeling that they've been let out. As you have seen, our program is addressing from top to bottom. We are looking for that person. If you know Nita, do take plus eight dropouts. So we have a program for such. So we don't want anybody feeling they've been let out, they've been ignored because we are looking at the cream. We are also going down. As much as we are building up, we are going down. Also at this, we do the same. We are also looking at our semi-skilled and unskilled people and also equipping them with skills that are necessary for them to go to the next level of their role. So it's all around. So the training is offered for three months to foster entrepreneurship skills, empower the local youth. We give training to the five opportunities in the market. Uh, there's a high demand of buildings coming up in Kwari. So we're making sure what we are gearing towards is electrical and welding. Because we want them to make those drill doors and we want them to do for you the electrical, engineering and all that. And the, the kind of training we take them through is very intense. So once they live here, they're capable of doing some for you in your home. And once they make the little money, they can go and further their education. They're just giving them a stepping stone. They are able to convert ideas into actions. So they'll tell you when they come in, I want to be a business person, but I don't know how. So what we've done, we also spoke to uh, KO, and they come in and they give them entrepreneurial skills uh, training. We've also had, they've also been told about their weather fund, their youth fund, and all that. They're being supported, so it's not, it doesn't only stop the base. We are also going outside and looking for other external stakeholders who can be able to come in and address these skills gaps. Then we provide them with theoretical and practical of the job training at base center of excellence. We all invited to come and see our center of excellence. It's the best, I can assure you that, with the best team. So we do ensure learning is happening and people are being equipped with skills. Um, so we also have a process for the same. This one is close to the community only. So we identify organization training needs. Where are our gaps? <laughs> they need to share the community department. They are the ones who know where the chiefs are. They are the ones who know the homes. So they are the ones who are tasked to go and look for them. The community department disseminates information. Applications are received. Shortlisting is done. Commencements of, commencement of program. Planning happens. Tests are done. Completion. Evaluation. And finally, NATO releases the results and we call them and we party with them and we congratulate them. And the cycle happens again, over and over and over again. 